Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo, where the worst lightning takes. <laughs> Let's get right to the news. We might finally have confirmation of Skeleton Crew's release date. That's bold to say confirmation. It is bold. But they actually submitted their like copyright claimant information, like pre-registering it to go to the screen, which is something that they have to do. Okay. So we have uh, an image, and I've got it up on the screen there for you, with the information that was made appropriate. Date of anticipated completion is December 2023, but projected date of publication is what's important, January 2024, approximate. How did we get this information? How many Bothans had to die for this? I can't tell you that. It would, news would distress you. <laughs> it probably would. <laughs> Yeah, so it looks like they just bumped it back to January when it was supposed to originally come out in November. Yes. Didn't we have uh, Julia White, like, a week, the yes, he supposed did. release he date at one point? He looked at the camera and said, did I do that? <laughs> and yeah. that was it. I was actually still hoping it would come this year. I kind of figured with the strikes that we were looking. I said January, so you did. I you, may have You uh, guess it was January. I mean, this, yeah. like I said, they wrote approximate on yeah, this claimant. Yeah. So it can still shift. But I also think that this shows that they're possibly anticipating the end to the actor strike soon. I know negotiations yeah. have sounded like they're going well, and I think a lot of the the headway of resolving this strike came from resolving the writer yeah. strike because the deals are probably going to involve some of the same issues. Yeah. And what's good for one was probably going to work for the other. Yeah. Well, it felt like the actor strike was kind of in response to the writer strike. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't know all the details as I've admitted a million times before. But it seemed like it was kind of a, a solidarity move in a way. Mm-hmm. There's also a description of the works, which I'll now unveil for everybody because I've kept it hidden until now. <laughs> How dare you. In the first episode of The Skeleton Crew, we are introduced to four kids who make a mysterious discovery on their seemingly safe home planet and get lost in a strange and dangerous galaxy. Finding their way home, meeting unlikely allies and enemies will be a greater adventure than they ever imagined. Sounds like Stranger Things in space. It does. It also sounds a little bit like the Goonies. It sounds a lot like a lot of things. Yeah, it is pretty generic. I mean, honestly, that doesn't really but give us a lot. They don't want to put in the description the exact play-by-play, well, play, of course, <laughs> of what they're doing. No. The and key... it ends with this amazing thing happening. Yeah. Yes. The key that everyone's been finding interesting is lost in a strange and dangerous galaxy. Yeah. Are they trying to generically refer to the Star Wars galaxy being or... in... Or... Or are they going... To another to galaxy. the new beyond. Yes. I or mean... Or possibly they're just going to throw out there another Star Wars galaxy place. Oh, that would be amazing if they this go to a different, different one. a different galaxy. Yes. Maybe one that's closer than the one that Ahsoka's trapped in. Yeah, sure. Either way, it's interesting, and I'm glad we're finally getting maybe the hint of an update as to what's coming, because I'm tired of being in limbo. Originally, yeah. they kind of gave us like a deadline for all these things... Then the strikes happened, and then everything went, maybe we'll come out sometime. Yeah, somehow it will come out someday. Right, well, so I, I, I didn't, like I said, I think I think January makes a lot of sense, because they still have a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. as we've discussed before, in the can. We still have Acolyte coming, we still right. got Season 2 of Andor, we got Bad Batch Season 3. So they actually have quite a bit of stuff for next year. Which is really exciting. Yeah, hopefully. We could have a really nice, full next year. Well, I mean, I, I've got to imagine Andor 2 is going to be... Like, oh, I, yeah. I'm way too excited about that. That's just going to, now watch, that's going to disappoint. But no, I, I, don't, I really don't think so. But hey, we got a lot of stuff. I think Bad Batch Season 3 could be really good. I think Andor could be really good. I think this is uh, the mystery. This is the big one that I have no idea about. Mm-hmm. I think Acolyte, as we've also discussed before, is going to face a lot of criticism just for outside reasons. The show itself may be good. We'll have to wait and see. But certainly, certainly a lot coming next year, in theory. In theory. All right, let's move on to a little bit of Ahsoka. There was an interview with the Kiners, the, of course, the composers of the show, not just Kevin Kiner, but his two children, Deanna and Sean, were, they've both been collaborating with him for 10 years at this point, but now they're finally really stepping into the interviews more. I had no idea. I'm ashamed that I've never uh, knew that before. They do get, most of the time, kind of uh, thrown in the additional music ah, when they're yes. credited. He gets the top billing, and then there the additional music comes from them. They did an interview with Screen Rant, where they kind of talked about things like character themes and Dave. And I found this interview very interesting. Oh? Mm-hmm. 
First, they kind of talked about character themes and how they want to insert character themes that you know from, because of course, these characters came from, a lot of them came from Rebels. Or Clone Wars, even. Or yeah. Clone Wars. And Kevin Kiner did He's a lot. He's done it all. He is the animated John Williams. That's what I call him. So yeah. he made a lot of their themes and he, you know, of course, would want to use them. But Dave was apparently consistently holding them back from I'll, using I them. I do an Anakin line right there. Because he wanted them to play with emotions more. What? Jenna said, as far as the theming goes, it really comes from great guidance from Dave Filoni, who was really helpful in giving us that insight of when we would use somebody's theme. He would be like, no, this isn't the time or place for this. They're in a different spot. You need to understand they're on a different part of their journey. They're not the same person they were 11 years ago. Their environment is different. Their emotions are different. They're going through a different thing. It was really helpful to have that because we would definitely fall into that. And then Kevin said he had to de-geek us. We're like, let's do Sabine's theme. And he's like, no, not right now. Play her emotions. That's your job. (laughs) Then we're like, oh, yeah, I've only been doing this for 40 years. I should have known that. But we were so geeked out about using the themes. I like the way you read that so dismissively. I don't know if that's how Dave sounded. Sorry. Naboo is still a tad bit under the weather. He recovered. Sorry, there's probably a weird cut in there because yeah. it was going to laugh, but then I started coughing. Yes. But, uh, yeah, you did kind of speak very dismissively. I mean, in, in a way, it's kind of almost strange because, yeah, Kevin Kinder, he's been doing this for 40 years. And, you know, Dave, I'm not saying he's not wise to the ways of the score, right? But... He's not an expert. I would say Kiner is. So mm-hmm. you almost wonder why you almost don't defer well, to Kiner. Well, and if they're saying, let's do Sabine's theme, and he's like, no, play with her emotions, well, you can <laughs> change <laughs> Sabine's theme to play onto the emotions to make yeah. it more somber or sad, yeah. but still include her theme in it. That's what they do in a lot of Star Wars. I mean, Rise of Skywalker, all of those sequel films played original themes with some alterations. Yeah. But the theme was still there. For the most part, yeah. So it's weird that he's like, no, don't do not do that. Not right now. Don't, don't. But people who've watched the projects and watched Rebels and stuff are like, yes, where's the theme? I need it. Yeah, well, we do hear a lot of them in there. Mm-hmm. We hear a lot of Ahsoka stuff from before. Talking about Ahsoka theme, Kevin Kiner also kind of talked about how indispensable the input from his kids were in making the iconic like end credits theme. And it was born out of an idea they had for a variation of the Ahsoka theme. He said, a perfect example of progressing the music is what these two did with my Ahsoka theme. That has its roots in Tales of the Jedi, where we did the Birth of Ahsoka episode, and then the three episodes about Ahsoka. They came up with a variation of Ahsoka's theme, which is now the beginning of the end credits of Ahsoka. It's a variation of what was in Tales of the Jedi, but it's taking that melody. And we do just play the melody later on in the end credits, but at the beginning it's a variation of that theme, and it's a new take. It has a groove in it, which we call a Ronin groove. It's a Ronin motif. A lot of people didn't like the word uh, Ronin being used in the Ahsoka. Well, because they gave us the impression of it the whole time, and then having to say it felt redundant a little bit. A little bit. Okay. You would think the galaxy would have its own name for that, too? I mean, I, I get the paying homage mm-hmm. thing, but I, I didn't have too much of a problem with it. I know a lot of people really didn't like it, but it is what it they is. They use a lot of that stuff, like calling them Bokken Jedi. Yeah. Even though everybody thought he said broken Jedi. <laughs> I'm among oh, them. Broken. Oh, yeah, broken Jedi. Broken. Yeah, that like, makes no, sense. No, he's not broken. He's fine. Yeah. He's fine. I don't know. Have you seen Cal this lately? A little broken. Well, Cal might be. but Yeah. But uh, Ezra was fine. He wasn't broken. He, well, he had his moments in season three where he was uh, <laughs> dabbling in the dark side. But he's not broken anymore. Well, not that we know. Maybe that's the big secret. He's a mess on the inside. This that's why I left the Stormtrooper around. Let's just move it makes on. sense. Just kidding. They also kind of discussed writing for Grand Admiral Thrawn. Hmm. The theme in Rebels was huge. It that was, was awesome, great. yeah. Full on organ action. But his introduction in the sixth episode was a scene that people were like, Where's the theme? I was among the people calling for that, yeah. Because it felt like the moment where we wanted it. Yeah. But then apparently it was uh, realized that it did not fit. Says who? I don't know. Deanna <laughs> says, We were like, Thrawn's theme, let's go! Then Kevin's like, with the organ! And then Deanna's like, we were doing all the archipelagos and everything, every aspect of it, and having it develop with the scene, but then we went over it with Dave. He was like, this piece is playing the music. We need to be focused on the moment in the scene. 
Sean said, and the point of the scene is not the music. Deanna said, exactly. So when we came back to the drawing board, we were like, especially since so many people have not met this person, we need to tell you, this is a really dangerous bad guy. We need to add weight to it. We need to inject fear into just hearing that one note. That's kind of how we developed it. We started to distort the organ. We found different ways to make it more atmospheric, to match the presence of his ship, and make you feel the presence of this destroyer. I think if I had known the original version, I would have liked this version even more. I mean, I like it. Well, yeah, but it was but actually a bit of a letdown because Dave says it was about the scene. But the scene was just like, here's the Star Destroyer. Here's, here's Thrawn the walking things down lining the up. I Enoch. think that playing his regular theme would have been better than just the one note organ. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I agree. I mean, like I said, I don't think I am it was not bad. a composer. I don't know no. what is the best but for the this situation. But the thing is. Neither's Dave. That's Neither my point. Dave. I think. Nah, I mean, it's his show. Heard, so. well, I've heard so many people clamoring that that is the moment we should have gotten Thrawn's yeah. theme. Yeah, yeah. And we just didn't get it. I mean, I guess are they saving it for the movie? Who knows? I don't think so. It's gonna be it's gonna be a different emotion to go along with the movie for him. So have a new uh, new theme. All right, last piece of news I want to get into before we head to new this week: the Star Wars films are going to be on Disney's linear networks. Starting on uh, the weekend, this last weekend they started up. Cool, I can finally watch them. Yeah. If you to see any of these uh, movies. Boy, you're great. <laughs> so Disney renegotiated domestic television contracts with Turner. So as a result, the updates on the licensing agreements for the Star Wars films on television, Disney-owned channels such as ABC, Freeform, and FX Family of Networks are now able to watch those videos, watch those original movies, along with Turner Channels, TBS, TNT, and Turner Classic Movies. Twelve released films, prequels, sequels, OT, as well as Rogue One, Solo, and the Clone Wars Ooh. animated movie can come out on all of those networks. But what about the Ewok movies? <laughs> no. <laughs> Missing no, out. No. But these were all theatrical releases, and now they can be watched in your own home. Yay. Of course, they would rather you watch them on Disney+. Plus. I'm sure yeah. there's some sort of advertising agreement that goes along with letting them use these. Like, by the way, when you're playing these, you have to play X amount of Disney Plus commercials. <laughs> Probably every commercial break will have a Disney Plus advertisement. I'm just saying that feels like it should be a part and of it. And it'll be like, if you want to watch these without commercials, watch them on Disney+. Plus, Or, or you want to watch more about that character in the show? Yeah. Like Disney+. Plus. Like you have to play like an Ahsoka trail every time you play the Clone Wars movie? <laughs> Probably. Or Mando during... You know, they're they're going to have to. All right, let's move on to new this week da, in Star Wars, etc. Tuesday, da, da, we have a da. new book coming out, Crimson Climb. It's written by E.K. Johnston. She's also the author of the Ahsoka novel that Dave retconned into oblivion. Eh, uh, yeah. But this book is about Kira during her time with the criminal syndicate Crimson Dawn, revealing more of her backstory. And how Maul trained her to go toe to toe with Darth Vader. Dun dun dun. No. Well, she does kind of no. in the comics. But this isn't the comics. No, it's not. The book will cover about a year and a half time span, starting when Kira was separated from Han and ending directly before she first met Maul. Oh, boo. Yes. Yeah, so it was going to be about her time with Maul. No. It's about oh. her time in the syndicate leading up to when she first met him. Oh, come on now. Mm-hmm. You know there's going to be another book with the time with Maul. Can we just get to the good part, please? That'll be Crimson Descent. <laughs> you probably just <laughs> probably just got the name of the book right there. Probably. Good job. You're welcome. Wednesday. For comics, we will have Dark Droids, number three, continuing the evil droid yep. thing. Yep, the comics like to just do some strange and interesting things from we time to time. We also have Mandalorian, season two, number five. The Ahsoka episode. This is when we tell you not to buy it because it is, it is just, just the same, the same as thing. the show. Yep. We're also going to be having voice chat on the Discord server, 8 p.m. Central Time yes, this Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday, not Thursday Wednesday, because of Loki. Because Thursday Loki. is Loki Season 2, Episode 8. Yeah, at the time we would normally uh, no, do. No, Season 2, okay. Episode 2, at 8. Did you say episode, yeah, Season I'm, 8? <laughs> We've gone to the future. only six episodes and I'm giving oh. you Episode 8. No, Episode 2 at 8 p.m., which we will make a review uh, once again. Yeah. First episode was pretty solid, if you are... Uh, it was pretty solid. Yeah. It felt very connected to the first season. Which, yeah. Yeah, I like Sometimes it. they don't of... do that so well, but this was... It was perfect. It's like a direct continuation of the first season. It was beautifully done. Yeah. All right, well, that is going to be all we got for you this time. Now it is your turn to take to the comments below and tell us what you think of any and all of today's news. And let's talk some Star Wars. 
And until next time, thanks for watching.